And the first obstacle for me to living the life that I loved and choosing the life of an entrepreneur began right here at Peterson Elementary in East Carbon, Utah. I was in Ms. Astrakoff's class, drank my chocolate milk, and then she said, turn that milk carton into a craft project and replicate your home. So I cut a few things out, made it, and then she took it back from all the class and put it up on the shelf. She said, remember your address, go home and memorize it, and when you come back, we'll give this back to you. I couldn't wait to show my mom this beautiful little project, and then I went home and totally forgot about it. So I went back to school thinking I would remember it, and I didn't. Now it's the final day, came down to two people, and the first kid remembered his address, so now all eyes are on me, and I buckled, I froze. And so Ms. Ashcroft grabbed the milk carton and she threw it in the trash. And in that moment, I said, I am stupid. The way most of the world defines legacy is how much money you leave behind in the next generation. But I believe legacy isn't just what you leave, but it's how you live. We all do things for our family. We care about our family. We want to provide a great legacy. Just handing money to them doesn't do that. It's the actions we take and the lessons that we help them learn along the way. And I learned lessons from my great-grandfather. It's amazing to think that my great-grandfather in 1913 left his pregnant wife and he lived in a tent year round until he could save up enough money. It's seven years before he sees them again, sending money to them, hoping that they're gonna come, hoping that they can communicate, hoping that the letter's gonna come back and he hears how they're doing, not even knowing what his daughter looks like. Seven years. Coal mines is a, was an up and down uh, occupation and dangerous and uh, you had to work pretty darn hard. When we left East Carbon and moved to Price, we had an amazing house on Birch Circle, or at least I remember it as a kid being amazing. But then when the mines went on strike again and my dad worked for the unions, we ended up moving as a temporary home to the trailer you see behind me. Watching his dad and his willingness to risk his life to try and save other people, and be on the mine rescue teams, he was on several teams, and see what a difference he could make in people's lives. Then we could see that's what Garrett decided to do as well. He started at a very young age and he just continued and he hasn't stopped. So look, my, my first businesses, other than babysitting and mowing lawns, but that was more of a family thing. But then when my, when my dad would come home from the coal mines, sometimes when the bosses were in town, he'd bring home the surface mining vehicles and clean them up. And my mom worked at a credit union and they'd repossess vehicles. I started to kind of fix up this 1975 Chevy truck that my dad was th saying, hey, you keep up your grades, you keep doing good things. I'm gonna give this to you. I fixed it up. He said, hey, I actually think you can help me detail these cars. My mom said, hey, you could talk to the president of the credit union, maybe detail the repossessed car so they could sell them for more. And everyone in the community was great to support him and he would go pick up their cars and bring them here and detail them and, and then he started earning money and then he started uh, doing the business program at the high school and he set his goals that he wanted to be the entrepreneur of the year for the high school. And then I launched a business at the age of 15. Six months later I won third place for the Rural Young Entrepreneur of the Year. It came with 500 bucks which is probably how I launched a speaking career because that 500 bucks was, I only made $600 net income by the time in the business. But by the next year, I was the Young Entrepreneur of the Year for the state of Utah, right? So for 30 and under and for the governor's entrepreneur, they came with $5,000. And I want to take that $5,000 and what do most teenagers want to do? They might want to blow it, but I want to invest it. Why? Because I want to prove I wasn't stupid when that milk carton box got thrown away. To live a life you love, it's about being bold. It's about taking initiative and action. Yeah, I've been playing it so safe and small. And then I had a friend that came up and he said, hey man, I'm gonna go to Korea for the summer. I have friends over there teaching English. They're doing amazing. It'd be a great adventure. I think you should come along. So I get on a plane frightened. I couldn't even imagine flying over the ocean. I get on Singapore Air and we finally land in Korea. I don't even know what's going on, where my friends are at, where I'm supposed to meet them. I'm completely lost and it didn't get much better. People started getting deported for teaching English over there. If you didn't have specific visas, and I didn't have that visa. So now I'm teaching Daewoo executives and kindergartners, and I'm completely alone, because my friend bails on me, because he just doesn't feel like he can get enough work, and he just gives up early. But I'm tenacious, I didn't want to give up, yet I was feeling so alone. 
I remember when people would ask me what my husband did at first when we were first married, I didn't have really anything to compare it to because Garrett was like, there isn't a job out there that is the thing that I wanna do out there. And so I'm just gonna create the career that I want. The career that fits my gifts, that fits my goals, fits what I wanna to contribute to people. And I'm just gonna design a job, make that what I do for a living. And to me, that was just, why, what do you mean? You're gonna go and just do this thing that doesn't already exist. Well, it was truly frightening. Uh, I knew that, you know, he was gonna get married and I was thinking about, oh, but you've gotta have that, that job security and you've gotta have that pension and you've gotta have that money coming in steady. You can't go out on your own and it'll be up and down and, you know, worry, worry, worry as a mom. So I have to tell you, it wasn't as easy for me to take. As an entrepreneur, people perceive what we do as risky. Yet I see is not following your dream is the riskiest thing that you could do. So that was such a difficult time because what if they didn't accept me? What if I would go back and feel that loneliness just like I was in, in Korea again and I was just hoping that they didn't have that disappointment or concern or frustration because I didn't want to create worry for them. Hell, they're, they're Italians, they're worried all the time anyway. I didn't want to add to that or worse, be an outcast that they just didn't accept. Well, you know, at first we thought he was crazy for not taking these uh, job offers. But we also knew that if anybody could do it and make it work, whatever he decided to do, that he would do it. Doesn't just give up. He keeps trying until he... It's like me. Does it. It's like me. It's like the same. Just when I play a video game, if I, if I'm di if I die or I fail, I try again and again. I love what he creates for other families and businesses because it isn't just about the money, it's about wealth in, in your whole life. It's really, really cool to be an entrepreneur. He doesn't spend too much time on work, but doesn't spend too much time not on work. This is, this is Garrett, and he's not just concerned about making money, he's concerned about helping people, helping them with their finances, you know, helping them live the life that they should live not to put everything off until later, till they retire, till it's too late. It didn't take us long to realize that he made the right decision. So legacy is how you live. It's not just what you leave, it's what you do. It's who you are. It's how you deliver value in the world. It's every day the example that you bring to others. If you want to live a life you love and have a legacy that will last, it really comes down to overcoming fear. Then it's about understanding that you're not alone. You are not alone. There's no reason for anyone else to doubt you because they can see the evidence through the actions you take, the energy you have, and all the thoughts that they had before because of fear, because of worry for you. They will dissipate. That's what Wealth Factory is here for, to have a team of people that have your back. More people in this world right now say they have no one that has their back. Wealth Factory will have your back. You've got financial advocates with your financial architects, with your wealth engineers, with your business scale strategists, with the accredited network. You're gonna find a community of like-minded individuals that are out there to make the same type of impact in a different way, in a different career, because they're all entrepreneurs.